Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Today we're making one of these. This is a nut driver for your chip breaker screw. Let's dive in. We're going to start by making the blade for the screwdriver and I'm going to use this scrap piece of steel I have. Uh, this is just a simple bracket you can get from the hardware store, but I want to cut the hole off and cut it long. We're going to make it about an inch and a half or so long. It is about three quarter inch wide. Uh, we need to actually make it a little bit thinner and it's a little bit too thick. Sixteenth of an inch is, uh, is too much to go in there. So we're going to do some other modifications. So after cleaning off the burr, I'm going to bring in a file and use the side of the bench as a guide to hold the file in place. I'm just going to file off the tip on both sides to bring it down to the thickness that will fit into the screw slot. So occasionally I'll bring the screw over here and make sure it fits in. You can see it fits there, but not in the middle and not on the other side. So I put a little more weight on the other side. I'm going to do the, the same filing to both sides of this, and this actually still gives you the strength of the, the whole thickness, but it'll be much, uh, much thinner to fit into the slot. I'm going to thin this whole thing down so that it will fit into this PEX tube brass um, piece that I got. And that will actually be the housing that goes around it. It is a little bit larger than my largest um, cap. So I actually went to the hardware store with my cap screws and found one that fit in there. And I can see how that will fit in the middle and uh, just basically be the driver and the PEX tube adapter can go around it. So we're going to cut this off and I was originally going to file off the ribs on this, but I thought, you know what, I kind of like the look of those, so I'm going to keep those on. We're going to file it down, get all the burrs off and get it nice and smooth. And so this is basically going to turn into a collet that will go around the blade and the block of wood. Speaking of the block of wood, I'm going to grab this piece of walnut, a uh, small scrap I've left over. It has the pith going through it and so we're going to shave it down and make it a little bit smaller. But I need to have a reference face and a reference edge on this. Because we're cutting it square, it's actually a reference face and another reference face. Because I don't know if you can have one edge on a square block, but that's what we're going to have. <laughs> I'm going to rip it down and take it to its final width. Basically trying to take that pith um, out of the board. I don't want that running through the screwdriver. And the more I cut it off, then I realized, oh, the pith goes at a weird angle. So we're going to have to work around that. <laughs> or I could grab another piece, but I found it. Let's just work around that. Maybe I'll make it as a, a feature, fill it with epoxy or something of that nature. Once we rough cut it, we can plane it down and smooth it down into the square. Square is about two inches by two inches ish. I want to turn this into a cross cross section. Uh, so I'm going to lay out with a marking gauge running all the way around it from all four sides and then start cutting down to it. Using the dovetail saw allows me to rip down directly to those lines and then I rotate it a quarter of a turn and the next cut basically turns it into a rabbit cut. Hey, look at that. We're going to repeat this and go all the way around until we get this star pattern. Um, some people make these flat and just cut them out of three quarter inch stock. I like to make it out of the star. It just That's looks good. a little bit easier. It looks a little bit cooler and, and it feels good in the hand. But uh, you can make this handle whatever shape, size, and style you'd like. The next thing we need to do after making the cross section is cut a slot for the bit to fit down into. Now this is a three quarter inch thick piece of steel and none of my saws cut three quarter inch Why thick. So I'm gonna use my largest handsaw to rip it down. So I cut it with the dovetail and got it close and then I can come with the handsaw and widen it out a little bit just like that. But yet that's still not big enough. Thankfully, I've got this file that is almost the exact width I need it to be. And so I'm going to use this file to run down inside of it. And you can see it's a little bit smaller than it needs to be. Uh, so I can say file it down a ways. Uh, then we can use it to just widen the gap out just a hair more. The next thing I need to do is actually work on cutting down the sides for this collar to fit onto. And so I can lay in that collar and find out how far I need to cut down either side. I want to have the collar sticking up. Uh, by a little less than a quarter inch, something around 3 16th of an inch, uh, so that there's enough space for the screw head to fit into it. Once we've marked out on that, then I can come in with the saw and cut down to that circle. And the fun part is you get to come with a chisel and break off these pieces, and it's very, um, they're very enjoyable here. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but busting off big pieces with a chisel is always very enjoyable. This will get us close to square, uh, close to round, but it's not quite. And so we're going to come in with the saw and cut it octagonal, and the saw cuts in until it gets close to that rounded edge. And then we can come with the chisel and pop those out. And at this point, you're just going to turn that octagon into a round with a file and rasp. The rasp really takes everything down and gets us close. So I'm going to go down right to that line or very closely to it, and then I can start working the back on it. And we can test it back and forth and make sure that the collar fits on. Uh, drive this down in. I want to make sure 
uh, then I'm not going to split it. So I'm, I'm being very, very careful when I drive it down. I'm not pushing in too hard, but I will still want it to go in relatively well. So you can see how the collar will slide down into this, but the, the, the screwdriver actually needs to be recessed slightly into the collar. So I need to push that um, the so blade down in a little bit farther. That means I'm going to have to file it out down a little bit farther. So I get the file out and keep going, basically turning the file into a saw. Once I get it down deep enough, then we're going to come in and start doing some of the detail work before gluing this all together. And I want to make sure all of my shoulders are the exact same height. So I'm going to come in with a chisel and clean them up. This one, I, the saw stayed a little bit farther away from the line. So we can deal, detail that down. Come in with the file and smooth them out. And you'll see our transition from one shoulder over to the other, trying to get them close. Before finally gluing them up, I'm going to chamfer all of the edges on this uh, because I don't want to do this after I have the collar on there, I don't want to be running into that. Uh, though I found out afterwards, I'm, I'm going to have to come back and detail and clean it up a little bit later, but oh well. I'm going to do all of the other chamfering and detailing, run files down each of the flutes inside and clean those up. Just smooth out all the surfaces I can before gluing it up. I'm going to use Total Boat High Performance. Uh, as the epoxy. Do I need something structural and, and powerful like this? No, um, but I have it on hand. And once you get epoxy, it's kind of one of those things that you just, uh, uh, it's an investment. Those jugs will last you for a long time for the average woodworker. But uh, unless you're doing a lot of inlays, uh, they will, uh, they'll, they'll suit you well. I'm going to mix in a little bit of dye to fill this in. And I ended up putting way too much in here and it was spilling out all over the place, but oh well. I like the, the blue dye, and as you're going to see the slits down the sides, I wanted to make something a little more obvious. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put some tape into the corners to try and mitigate that coming out, but then as you've seen in a little while, as I get it close, the more I tap this down, the more epoxy comes out those sides because I put in way too much. So it starts smearing and dripping all over the place, and yeah, I made a mess of it, but that's fine. We're going to clean it up later. Uh, it's one of the nice things with epoxy is you can scrape it off very easily afterwards. For the collar, I want to make sure there's enough epoxy on that until it goes in. And then I'm going to add a little bit more to the top so that it will soak down in around the collar and give me a nice little surface inside. So I load these up with a couple drops, and that's about all it needs. I'm going to let it sit overnight and then come back and clean it all up. I'm going to hit this mostly with files to do the, the cleanup on here. You can see where the epoxy is squeezed out. And the files make quick work of coming down and bringing it flush to the surface and trimming it out. So yeah, I kind of have an epoxy-filled table thing. <laughs> to get right up close to the brass, I'm going to wrap it with tape so I'm not scuffing it with an accidental rub. Uh, but this will allow me to smooth out the shoulder all the way around and give it a nice detailed surface. Card scrapers are phenomenal for cleaning out glue. Anything that got down in the corner, you can turn the card scraper and get right down in there and scrape it out and get a nice smooth surface on there. Uh, a good card scraper is an amazing thing for epoxy and it works so much faster than sanding and so much easier and you can get into a lot of detailed spaces. One of the problems with files is it cleans, it clogs them up so you want to make sure that you're regularly cleaning them. Having a good file card, not card file, <laughs> will allow you to clean them out quickly and easily. At this point, it's just detail. It's done. It is functional, but we want to smooth it out. And so I want to clean up all these little surfaces and come in with the files, um, round over the edges a little bit. I'm going to use a, uh, a sanding block because this is something that goes in the palm of your hand. We don't want anything sharp or rough on there, but a little bit of sanding with this um, very fine sanding block goes a long way. Also, the sanding shows you any imperfection, and so occasionally we'll be like, mm, yeah, I should come back and hit that, and we can clean it up. Before finish, once everything is where I want it to be, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of 400 grit sandpaper, and uh, then we can wrap it off and get ready for the dip. And I love this part, especially with walnut. If you sand it, it turns this gray, schmoogy, bleh. But the moment you dip it in boiled linseed oil, it just pops. And yeah, homemade boiled linseed oil is one of my favorite finishes. I have several videos on making your own boiled linseed oil. Um, it is relatively simple, though it can be a little scary. <laughs> but uh, if you don't want to do that, Tried and True has uh, what they call Danish oil, yeah, which, like is, uh, just raw, which is just boiled linseed oil without all of the chemicals on it. And it's basically homemade linseed oil, but uh, you can buy it. After that, we're going to wipe it off, let it sit for a while, make sure it has as much as it wants, and then rub it down with paste wax and call it a day. Then we can take it for a test spin. You can see how this will come out. This fits on there and it gives you that tension to turn it all the way around, but it's not so big that it allows you to over tighten it. You don't have to really crank this down, you just need enough. And making it that size just makes it fit in and out very nicely. Also made sure that it fit all of my chip breakers and not just one or two of them because they all have slightly different sides. 
and uh, making one that works for all of them is really nice. So the slot is, the, the blade is small enough to fit into my smallest slot, and the head is big enough to fit around the largest head. And there you go. I really like how this came out. Nice, simple project, a lot of fun. Is it necessary? No, but uh, that's what a lot of projects in the shop are. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> So there you have it. Simple little project, a kind of a fun one. A lot of people like these, a lot of people don't, but they do make it a little bit easier as they kind of surround the screw so it just fits in there and you can get your force on with it. I kind of below that does actually help out the channel anytime you put a comment down there thank you that helps us get in front of more people helps the alg algorithm and you know how it works as well as hitting the like comment share subscribe thank you <laughs> if you want to go even farther there are a bunch of names over here those are all patrons on patreon without patrons or members here on the channel people who click that join button uh, we wouldn't be here we are completely sponsored by you also patrons get to see behind the scenes and kind of watch some things occasionally when we're shooting the video they're watching right now. Hi. <laughs> if you'd like to find out more, you know what to do. Click, go down below. And until next time, have a wonderful day. One of the nice things about screwdrivers is they never drive you nuts. They always drive your bolts. <laughs>